I am Paul Schimmel, curator of the exhibition Destroy the Picture, Painting the Void, 1949 to 1962. This exhibition is an exploration of a generation of artists who emerged in the late 40s and 50s internationally. Artists from Japan, the United States, and all over Europe were deeply and profoundly affected by World War II. And it is that destruction that brought these artists together in making the first truly uh, international art movements. The precedent for this exhibition is found in the iconoclastic uh, work of uh, Jean Fautrier. His works uh, aim to capture the screams of these individuals who were so uh, inappropriately treated as prisoners of war. He would glue layers of paper to the pictorial surface and then apply heavy impasto to form abstract representations of the faces of individuals tortured and killed. Crusty, biomorphic, cellular, these amoeba-like uh, faces evoke the damaged, torn, and ripped flesh of uh, the humans that he was um, so tragically inspired by. The general trajectory of this exhibition, beginning with these small hulls by Fontana, these eroded cuts and crevices by Shimamoto became more and more dramatically opened with time. And within the decade that this exhibition trajectory follows, what begins modestly and in a way with a real sort of respect for the picture plane ends, as in the case of Otto Mule, with the surfaces being so completely ripped open and destroyed that one can't even really refer to them as canvas on a stretcher anymore. It was through uh, destruction that a certain kind of life force uh, was revealed. They occupy a zone between uh, death and life, destruction and creation. Yves Klein made an extended trip of over 15 months to Japan beginning in September of 1952 to study judo. His fire paintings were linked to his concept of the void. As he said, in sum, my goal is twofold. First of all, to register the trace of human sentimentality in the present day civilization. And then to register the trace of fire which has engendered this very same civilization, that of the fire itself. And all of this because the void has always been my constant preoccupation. And I believe that fires burn in the heart of the void as well as in the heart of man.
Salvatore Scarpita, his was an art that was remaking the cars, the dirt track race cars of his childhood here in Los Angeles. drawings. Drawing was very slow when you were a boy. You looked very carefully at what you were doing. I made that drawing 1934, like I was 14, maybe going on to 15. Drawing, slow drawing about fast things can be fast drawing about static things. Drawing, drawing, going fast. has been a passion with me ever since I was a very young boy and I looked at painting and sculpture very much like I look at racing so it's art and racing or racing and art for me in gloves. I never wore them, but I've had them for a long time. I've never really used them. There's no sense in driving a sedan or a truck with these. These are Italian racing gloves. But they're built for a racing steering wheel. talk about racing and art, or art and racing. We're going to talk about what's happened to my head over these years. We're going to talk about going racing. Very funny, but these are already fogged up. That means I must be in art. There are racers that like the dirt. And there are racers that like the high banks, made out of asphalt or cement. Just like in the art world, there are those that run the dirt and there are those that run the high banks. The high banks are cleaner, but the dirt is more truthful and it's more exciting and it's more dangerous and it's got a lot of people in it. They are really the backyard where our own house dirt exists. Those tracks are the tracks that run right straight through the backyards of America. And these guys race on dirt. It's earth dirt. So like artists, sometimes
if there's an accident, you've got to hold on to the wheel. Because otherwise, you come loose to the wheel and your arms go up in the air. And then you know you're flying. When you're sitting in the car for the first time and you're looking down at the dashboard, the instrument panel is very sparse. There's just a couple of gauges. You've got to watch your oil. You gotta watch your gas pressure. Remember that. You gotta keep pumping that gas every lap. Force that air into those carburetors. Get that gas in there. Now you're looking at your car. You're still on the track. You're looking at the guys next to you. You're looking at your mechanics. They're saying something to you. You can hear them. You can hardly hear them. There's so much noise. You realize you're in on it now. You gotta get those things going. All right, here we go. See the guys lining up, the engines are started. I can hardly hear myself think now. My own engine's going. All right, we're coming down in there. We're coming down into the south turn. I'm on the pole on the inside. I've got to give the signal when we're going to go. All right, we're down to the south turn. We're all lined up now. I can see the guy to the right. That must be somebody that's really good, boy. He's got that goddamn red car going like hell. All right, we're coming down the back stretch now. I can see that north turn coming up on me. All right, I'm on the pole on the inside now. I'm the one that's going to give the start to this race. All right, we're coming down the front end. Hey, we got one more lap to go. One more lap to go. All right, we're back down in there again. We're back down into the south turn. This next time around, we're going to get that green flag. All right, we're on the back stretch now. We're on the back stretch. We're coming down into the north turn. Boy, this thing's bouncing around. Thank heavens those guys tightened up their car last night. They were up all night. Those guys tried their hardest. I'm coming down the front stretch. All right, I'm on the pole. We're getting a flag. Here we go. All right, down to the south turn. He's trying to cut me off on the outside. I'm down in there on the back stretch. I'm down in there on the back stretch. Coming into the north turn. All right, I'm out in front. I'm out in front now. Nobody's cutting me off. I'm down the front stretch again. Here I come around. I'm still leading this race. I'm down to the south turn. I'm still ahead of them. I see my radio. Stuck right down there, coming into the north turn. Here we sliding through, sliding through, sliding through. We're, we're out of the train, out of the stretch again. There it is. There's the flag. I'm out in front. This race is mine. I was racing alone on this track. It's mine! 
get into a race car for the first time, you're sitting in there and you're looking at the dashboard and you're looking down the hood and you're looking way down beyond the hood, down into an empty track. You start hearing the engines of the other cars next to you. You know that in a second you're gonna start your own car. You're getting ready. You gotta get going. And now's the time to get the thing going. All right, she's started up now. You can hear their engine starting up with you. You have to pump gas pressure in there. It's starting to come down in there. The dust is kicking up. The dust is kicking up. You're in there now. There's not much I can say except that uh, Ernie was on the outside. He looked like his car was in good shape. Mine was in pretty good shape too. We were coming in as fast, I suppose, as we dare get down into that turn. And Well, I saw a car fishtail in front of me. And then all of a sudden I saw the underside of the car. It looked a lot like a mackerel's belly. I remember seeing that. And then I saw Ernie try to avoid the car. And all of a sudden there were two cars up in the air. And I tried to avoid them. The dust was pretty thick, so I, I steered the car toward where the dust was thickest, hoping that somebody get out of my way you know when a car is spinning like that they, you steer toward them you run a good chance of avoiding them but I guess I didn't I was sorry about Ernie and, and Swede they were good drivers yeah I suppose we'll we'll have to go back to the garage now there's a lot of work to do we spent six months setting the car up. I suppose it's gonna take us a couple of weeks to get it back into shape again. I haven't got any time for any autographs. We got some other stuff. A little later, kid, I'll be with you.
not, not now, kid. A little later. Thank you. 